Hi everyone, hope you're keeping safe and sane during this difficult time that we're having in March 2020. Uh, my name is Hina Patel and um, I've been working on the Common Word Community Archive Project for almost two years now and I wanted to use this video to tell you a little bit about what's in the archives and the literature that we've got in there. Um, now, uh, this I'm going to tell you about, first thing I'm going to tell you about, it's arguably the very first thing that we published, um, is not just one thing, it is seven things, it is lifetimes, so it was a series of seven booklets. Um, so these came out uh, they were published in 1975 so it was actually a few years before common word was set up but um i'm going to tell you how they link to our history um and how what link they have to what common word has ended up doing so um we've got seven booklets they're called um it's the lifetimes it's what came out of the lifetimes project and that project was coordinated by greg wilkinson um, now he was the person who ended up setting up Common Word um, but Lifetimes is actually uh, the stories, the life stories of 13 people who are living in Partington um, in the 1970s. Um, so for you, those of you who don't know much about Partington just to give you a bit of context um, it's um, it was a small village that quickly expanded after the Second World War um, and was kind of turned into an overspill estate to accommodate for the people who'd been dispersed um, from slum clearances in inner city areas. So um, they've expanded this small village that was Partington. Uh, Partington is actually about nine miles southwest from Manchester city centre. Um, but you've got this newly expanded town, um, it's got lots of houses but it doesn't have many amen amenities or facilities, uh, it doesn't have very good transport links, doesn't have any schools, doesn't have any, well it doesn't have many places that people can go for work. So um, obviously things like this cause social problems. So some of the people in Partington um, decided to fight for the area that they were living in and to make some demands and as part of that they set up the People's Rights Office so this is just a place that anyone in Partington could go to and um, they could you know discuss any problems that they had. Um, now Greg Wilkinson I spoke to him in late 2018 so he got a job as a community worker in Partington so he'd met some of the residents who were there he'd met some of the people who worked in the people's rights office and some of the residents got together um, during there was a rent strike and um, they got together through the strike but they um, sort of Greg it, it sort of he realized that they didn't really know much about each other and they didn't know much about each other's lives so he got them together, he interviewed them and he um, he got them to meet each other. They were meeting each other's houses, they recorded everything and they transcribed everything. And that's what you get in the Lifetimes booklets. Now, um, I've got to confess, I've had a few other things on my mind at the moment. Um, so I haven't read all seven of them, but I'll tell you a little bit about what I've read so far. Um, in this first book booklet, um, you've got Jack and Elsie. They both grew up in the slums of inner city Hume and then they went out when they were teenagers and they went and had their own separate lives and got married to other people, but then in later life they got back together. Um, so that's quite an interesting story. Um, you've got Frank and Dolly. They are also a married couple. Uh, Dolly is a communist. Who, she comes from a communist, a left-wing family that grew up in Greenhays. Um, so that's kind of where the brewery is in Moss Side, in that kind of area. Um, and then you've got Frank, who wasn't born Frank. He was born Ivan and he grew up in a very rural parts of Russia in a very large family. 
that he didn't really feel like he belonged to and he ended up coming to England as an adult to find work and then I'm halfway through the stories of Eric and Betty. So Eric grew up in Runcorn, um, he grew up in a place where um, there really wasn't much work unless you wanted to work at the chemical plant or the tannery. And then you've got Betty who grew up um, in the Isle of Man uh, without her parents. So I'm going to tell you a bit about her because I mean I've been reading through all the stories and it's it's compelling and you've got some really affecting stories of people who grew up in some of them grew up in really severe poverty they encountered all kinds of problems in their lives from not being taken seriously at school severe illness um poverty and hardship really poor housing um and you know even experiencing quite serious violence at home um but what you find is when they're talking about their lives now they really have a kind of sense of dignity and I'm, I'm not sure where that comes from maybe it's from being part of the community in Partington or it could even be from being part of um the lifetimes project um yeah so many there's so many moments in there where I've been absolutely it's just not my, it's just not the window of me reading about these people's lives and it wasn't all too long ago um when they're interviewed they most of the people that I've read about are in their 50s so they were probably born in the kind of 19 mid 1920s and um uh, some of them mention parents or fathers who fought in the second world war um and one of the stories one of the people who's really grabbed my attention is Betty. So she um, she grows up on the Isle of Man. She's raised by her grandmother and that's largely, it seems, because her grandmother doesn't approve of Betty's mother. So that's her own daughter. And she doesn't approve of the man that Betty marries in a shotgun wedding. So that's Betty's father. So she gets adopted when she's two years old by her pretty well off grandmother. So that's what's different from Betty. Um, that's what's different about Betty from the other people I've read about in that she was actually, she came from quite a comfortable background, but it didn't mean that her life wasn't difficult. And you find out some really kind of, it seems quite messed up. Um, so Betty has an aunt, uh, a grand, her grandmother had a very young child who died when she was, nine years old so Betty had an aunt who died at the age of nine in a fire so when her grandmother adopts her she gives her all of her deceased aunt's things and gives her her old room um so yeah that's that's a bit crazy um and then yeah it doesn't end there either so you know Betty has a quite sort of surprising and violent encounter with her estranged father when she's in her teens so how does lifetimes link back to common word um after doing the lifetimes project greg wilkinson went on to start common word um and a lot of the early work published by common word was life writing um autobiographical material usually written in the first person and it's very much like what appears in lifetimes uh, so that's literature development right there um, many writers start off by writing about their own lives, their own families and their ancestors and in lifetimes and in, um, you know, the early work published by Common Word, you can see that there is that desire to hear working class stories being told by working class people. Now, most of the writing most of the life writing in the Common Word Archive didn't get a chance to be developed. Um, so maybe we as writers, um, as people accessing the archive, can fill in the gaps, um, expand on these stories and do them some justice. I mean, if you're talking about world building, there are whole worlds already built right here. Um, so I feel like it's up to us to make proper use of them. Okay, so I might do a part two 
when I finish reading the Lifetimes booklets, or if you'd like to hear some of these stories for yourselves, um, maybe I or someone else could do a video of them. So yeah, if you fancy anything like that, let me know. Right, that's all for now. Take care and I'll see you soon with something else from the Common Word Archive. Goodbye.